Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you are doing good. In the previous video, we covered section C of the sample paper issued by CBSE for the academic session 23-24. Now it's time to proceed. All right then, we will be covering the section D and E in today's video. So without wasting much time, let's get started. All right then, let's read the question from the section D. It's question number 31. This question is based on networking. Read question carefully. An educational organization is planning to set up its India campus. The head office is in Delhi. And in Chennai campus, there are four different blocks. In this table, the distance between the different blocks is mentioned. And the second table is all about the number of computers in each block. And here is a list of five questions which we have to answer. Let's check out the first question that is A. Suggest and draw the cable layout. For what? We have to connect the different blocks of the Chennai campus. There are two different ways with the help of which we can connect the different blocks to each other. The first option is we can consider the distance between the different blocks. In the marking scheme, this cable layout is suggested. This is depending on the distance between the different blocks. In this type of cable layout, we will be connecting the blocks with the minimum distance. Admin to engineering block is 55 meter. Admin to media is 50 meter and media to business is 45 meter. So in this way, this was the first method where we applied burst topology. In the second type of connection, we will be considering the number of computers and we will be applying star topology. Compared to other blocks, we can see admin block has more number of computers. So we will be connecting other blocks from the admin block. Both the topologies are correct because we have to suggest. We can suggest anyone. I will recommend to go ahead with the star topology because it is easy to suggest. Just we have to look at the block with more number of computers and connect the other blocks to it. Alright then, let's move ahead to the next question. Which network device will be used to connect computers in each block to form local area network? There are two options. One is hub and the another one is switch. But switch is a smart hub. That's why we will be using switch. What's the next question? Which block in Chennai campus would be server? As number of computers are more in the admin block, that's why it is a server. Let's check out the next question. Which fast and very effective wireless transmission medium should preferably use to connect head office at Delhi with the campus in Chennai? So compared to all other wireless transmission medium, microwave is very efficient. It's time to check out the last question. Suggest a device or software to be installed at the Chennai campus to take care of data security. And that is firewall. Firewall is a software which acts as a security guard, which will keep track on incoming and outgoing traffic in the network. It is very easy to cover these five marks. Moving ahead to the next question, differentiate between R plus and W plus file mode. So here are some of the differences. It is for two marks, but for safer side, write three differences. With R plus mode, we are actually opening the file in the read mode. That's why file must exist. Otherwise, we will be getting IO error. As we have already discussed, it is opening for the reading process. So the primary function is reading. And we know when we open the file for reading purpose, the data will not get overwritten. Now what about W plus? We are actually opening the file in the write mode, but it will also facilitate the process of reading. So in case of write mode, if file doesn't exist, it will get created. And with W plus mode, the primary function is writing. When we are writing, the previous data will get overwritten. We know in W mode also, if file doesn't exist, it will get created. But if file exists, the data will get erased. That's why we don't open the existing file in the write mode. We open it in the append mode. Hope you understood this concept. You can write any three differences of your choice. Moving ahead, let's check out the second part of the same question. Let's try to understand the question. There is a sports.dat file. The file contains sport name, team name and the number of players. Now we have to write one function named copy data. 
which will read the content from the sports file and copy the records to the new file the name of the file is basket.dat file but what's the condition the records with the sport name basketball will only get copied to the basket.dat file so let's check out the code according to the instruction the user defined function got created here we are dealing with two files the sport.dat file will be opening in the read mode for that we have used the rb mode and we are writing data to the basket.dat file so it will be open in the wb mode so the task of opening the file got over now we have to load the content from the sports.dat file for that we are using load function of the pickle module in this way we got the file content in the data variable let's just consider this is our file content the sports name is at the index 0 of the list so with if statement we are going to check whether the data of 0 is equals to basketball if yes we are dumping that list into the basket.dat file writing part is over but we have to count the number of records which we are writing it for that we have initialize one variable which will keep on incrementing by one the code for loading of data from the sports file is into the infinite while loop but when the loading is over it will display error to manage that we have used the concept of try except block whenever the error will encounter the except block will execute and the file will get closed so in this way we will not get any error finally we are returning that count so if we are considering the file content like this we will be getting the count 2 because we can see here there are two records with the basketball sport hope you understood this explanation there is a or question for the second part only here also we need to write a code based on file if you know how to write the code for the same you can skip this part so let's read the question there is a binary file named cinema.dat it has the following structure basically we have dictionary the key is movie number and it contains movie name as well as movie type as its value now what's the question we have to write user defined function the name of the function is find type and this function is going to take parameter which is movie type we need to display all the records from the binary file which has value of movie type as m type so whichever parameter we will pass that records will get displayed the movie type can be anything drama biopic romantic movies so let's check out the code for the same so according to the given structure key with list of values we have taken some random data these movies are of srks you know he is still ruling the bollywood with three hits in 2023 okay keeping it aside let's focus on the code mention user defined function got created with def keyword and we are passing the parameter also the first step is to open the file and we are reading the file that's why we are using rb mode we just now understood that why we keep our code of binary file in try except block using infinite while loop we will be loading the data for that we are using load function of the pickle module now look at the structure here we are dealing with dictionary this is key part and we have values in the form of list and you know when we iterate over dictionary by default it will iterate over keys but we are not interested in key we are interested in values because we have to compare m type that's why for iterating we will be taking values using values function now let's check what we want with if statement if empty type is in value then we are printing it so if we imagine this is our file content and i will pass empty type as romantic we will be getting this output it means we are getting data based on the m type so this is the m type what we have passed as we were discussing about movies let me know your favorite actor all right time to move ahead to the next question define term domain domain is nothing but a set of values which are permissible values or which are allowed values for the particular attribute 
you can write definition according to you for example roll number field can take only integer value so the domain is a set of integer values or you can take one more example if you are writing name into the table then only string values are allowed in the name so take any random example of your choice similarly if you are writing contact number or mobile number only integers are allowed so the domain for that is integer values proceeding to the second part of the same question this is based on the python and mysql connectivity in this question we have to insert the record into the table name student and the database name is school here are the attributes roll number name date of birth and fees for connectivity username password and host is provided and for the different fields of the table we have to take the input Okay let's help Kabir to write this program I hope you can recall all the steps for connectivity the first step is to import package so with the import statement we are importing the package mysql.connector and giving alias to it with the as keyword what's the next step open a database connection for that we are using connect function and this connect function present in the package so that alias we are using here this is the first parameter of the connect function host equal to local host the second parameter is user user is root the third parameter is password this information is provided to us in the question itself the fourth parameter is database database is mentioned as school so that we will be writing here if it is not mentioned you can take of your choice let's move ahead to the third step create a cursor instance so using the connection object that is common we are creating the cursor instance using cursor function the next step is to execute a query for that first we will design the query and which query we need we need insert query because we have to insert one record into the table and to insert the record we need data that data we are taking input roll number is converted to integer and fee is converted to float it's time to design query that we are initializing into one variable name query let's check out the query now so the query is insert into student values here we are using format function and providing all the parameters which we have taken input so these placeholders we will be writing into curly brackets if the parameter is string then we will be writing it into a single quote so don't forget to give single quote for the string parameter so now it's time to execute the query for that we will be using execute function the execute function works with the cursor instance when we look at the next step that is clean up the environment but here we executed the insert query insert query will update or modify the content of the table if you want to reflect that changes we need to use commit function the commit function works with the connection object so the changes will be permanently saved in the table if you will not write commit this record will not insert into the table now it's okay to clean up the environment we are closing the connection with the close function hope you understood this code also if you have any doubt let me know in the comments in this way with that question we completed section d now it's time to check out section e in section e there are two questions let's read the first question this question is based on mysql there are two tables and we have to write the queries based on two tables so let's read the first query display product name and brand name from the tables product and brand this query needs both the table to join the table we need one common column so bid is the common column among two let's check out the query select p name and brand name with the from clause we will be mentioning the name of the table the first table is product the second table is brand we are giving alias to it to make it simple and with the where clause we will be combining both these columns with this condition only common records will get displayed now let's check out the second description display the structure of the table product for that we will be using desc command desc product that was simple let's move ahead display the average rating of medimix and dow brand 
we can see the rating column is in the product table and brand name is in the brand column so we need to join both the tables again this time we need to print the brand name so this is the first column second column will be average of rating with the from clause we mention both the tables with the where clause we will be matching the common column in this query we are calculating average of rating which is a aggregate function whenever we use aggregate function we need to do the grouping and the grouping will be on the brand name because we need to print the average rating of the brand name now look at the column brand name there are total four brand names but we don't want all we are interested in medimix and dove so with the group by clause if you want to mention any condition we need to use having clause having brand name equal to medimix or it can be dove also hope you understood this query let's move ahead display name price and rating of products in descending order of rating all these three columns are in the product table so this query is based on a single table display name price and rating from product table now we have to display all this column but according to the description we need to display all this column in the descending order of rating for that we will be using order by clause order by rating it should be in the descending order so we are applying clause desc as we know by default it will display in the ascending order in this way we are done writing all four queries time to proceed to the next question this question is based on csv file let's read the question carefully result.csv file is used to store the result of students in different sports event there is a student id student name game name and result so when we will store result the value for the result can be won lost or can be tie Vedansh is going to manage that file so he needs to write two user defined function the first one is accept and the second one is one count so let's check out the first function this function will accept the record from the user and we need to add it to the result.csv file the column heading should also be added on the top of the csv file I hope you know the process to write data to the CSV file. If not, I will suggest you to go through this video at the speed of 2x and recall all the concepts. Let's check out the first step. We need to import CSV module. As we are writing user defined function, we can skip that part. The next step is to open the CSV file in the write mode or in the append mode. Before opening the file, we can take input or you can take it later also. So here is the input first we need to take student id that we are converting into integer the second is student name third is name of the game and the fourth is result using all these four variables we have created one list name data according to the questions we need to write headings too so for that we have created one more list named headings here are the headings the first is student id student name third is game name and the fourth is result So input part got over. Now let's open the file. With the open function, we are opening result dot csv file in the open mode because already file is created. We are adding some more data to it. We have used this inline parameter. I hope you know this importance of the new line parameter. Let me know in the comments. The next step is to create writer object. So using writer function of the csv module, we will be creating one writer object named csv writer. To write data to the CSV file we have two function first is write row and the second one is write rows here we are using write row function as we are writing row by row first we will be writing the headings and then we will be writing the data of the file finally we will be closing the file using close function hope you understood this code the task of writing first user defined function got over there is one more let's check out to count the number of students who have won any event as a python expert we have to help vedansh to complete that task understood you are a python expert so as a expert let's write the code here is the process to read the data from the csv file first of all we need to open the file in the read mode that we are opening with the open function and the mode is r mode 
the modes for the text file and the csv file are same the next step is to create reader object with the reader function of the csv module we created reader object and using this reader object we will be getting data into the data variable so in this way if we consider this file we will be getting data into the data variable you might have noticed that we got data in the form of list now we will be iterating over the list using for loop for x in data the question is we have to count the number of students who have won any event that we will come to know from the result part and the result of that game we have stored at the index 3 so we are interested into that index so with if we will be checking x of 3 is equals to 1 if the result is 1 then only we can say that student won the event if it is true we will be increasing the count by 1 as we have to count the number of students finally we will be printing the number of students who have won so if we consider this file content we will be getting the number of records who have won is equals to 3 as you can see the result 1 is 3 times here hope you will believe that now you are a python expert and that's the wrap for today's video with this we solve complete sample paper but this is just a beginning i will be bringing more sample paper tips and strategies to ensure you are well prepared for the exam if you found this video helpful do share with your classmates until next time keep studying smart stay confident i will see you in the next video